ritual rhythm in Indian society, there are many stigmas related to disabilities. The first notion is that the disabled people are actually cursed. The second notion is people think that if you are a disabled person or if you have a disabled child, you are being punished for your crimes that you committed in the previous life. Furthermore, some of these rituals are superbly dipped in superstition and there are even notions that if a mother's karma is posted down to her children, the child in the womb becomes disabled. These are some of the social stigmas that are attached to the aspect of disability, which is sad and which is not logical at all. What exactly? is the meaning of being disabled. A disabled person will lose function on physical, mental, intellectual and sensory basis. There are many different kinds of disabilities which are blindness, low vision, hearing impairment, locomotive disability, mental retardation, mental illness, cerebral palsy, autism, and many other, which have many people crippled in our society. Now, there are various laws for the disabled in India, like Mental Health Act 1987, the Rehabilitation Council of India, the Persons with Disabilities, the National Trust for the Welfare of People with Autism, the National Policy for Persons with Disabilities, and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But despite all these acts in India, our disabled friends are not able to work. They are not in the state to be totally financially independent. So what are the barriers that they are facing? Lack of policy and support integration. Although the laws have been made, but the laws are rarely applied. Negative attitude and stereotyping people. Lack of data. Unequal access to education, training and employment services. Psychological issues lack of trained and unbiased personals, lack of accessibility and lack of support services and information gearing to their needs are some of the very painful facts that the disabled people have to go through which will not help them become independent. Some people have left their disabilities behind this particular personnel is one of the greatest dancers in the Bollywood. You can see that although she has got a false leg, she has not let her disability shadow her talent. The acid attack victims, the victims who were human trafficked, the rape victims, these are all victims in the society and who live like uh, second-class citizens. They do not get any equality. We have with us Ms. Lakshmi Narasimhan, who is a professional in uh, special education. She has done her master's in psychology and English, and she has 20 years of experience in the field of special education. For people who do not know what is special education, special education is when we are uh, handling children with special needs and with disabilities whom we also call differently abled. So today on the International Day of Disabled People, uh, we are very lucky to have Ms. Lakshmi to share some of her opinions with us. So Ms. Lakshmi, um, this is, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you in this uh, talk of ours and we would really appreciate it if you can give us a little introduction of yourself with some of the uh, places that you have worked with some of the um, children you have worked yeah thank you Priyanka and it's a great pleasure talking to you and all the people there 
yeah hello hello everyone so i have been uh, working in this field for the last 20 years i started off uh, because uh, uh, as many people i was not much aware uh, of uh, disabilities but uh, i have a son who is uh, autistic so uh, then my journey started in this and i did a professional course in uh, special education to actually understand him better but then I found that uh, it really helps everyone else also. And uh, this later turned into my passion and my profession. And uh, I have basically worked with a lot of uh, mainstream schools uh, in uh, Delhi and Bangalore, CBSC, uh, IB schools. And they're helping mainstream the children who have the so-called disabilities. So that term itself is uh, very discriminating, I feel. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us how acceptance uh, is has to find um, its way in our hearts for when we are talking mm -hmm. about differently abled children? Can mm -hmm. you give us uh, your opinion? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, according to WHO, 15% of the world's populations has some kind of impairment. So that's a huge number. It's more than 1 billion. So then uh, because they cannot do certain activities that we can do easily, society in general tends to discriminate against them. And so just because they cannot do certain activities, they are uh, uh, we don't actually let them do anything else. So maybe a child who is visually impaired can't read, can't see, but then they can do uh, everything else, right? But society discriminates against them and uh, just puts them in a corner saying this person is disabled, they can't do anything. So like that, I can give a lot of examples. So the, basically, we as people who are uh, living together in society, we have to open our hearts and minds and think in accepting diversity. All of us are diverse. I would just like to uh, add one uh, term here. People talk about visual impairment, hearing impairment, intellectual impairment, locomotor impairment, and all. So once in a meeting of people who were having any kind of, they, they had a meeting, they had a conference, people with various disabilities. They started thinking that society is calling us, giving, giving us so many labels, and we are just known by our labels. So why don't we call the so-called neurotypicals, you know, so-called uh, normal people? Why don't we give them a label? So after a lot of thought, they gave a label which says that temporarily abled bodies. <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one yeah all of us are temporarily able anything can happen no anytime so yes. yeah so we have to keep this in mind when we just look at a person with disability and just you know uh, sort of we put a block over there and let me not think about it at all yeah Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us now we have inclusive schools where we have mm -hmm. students who are studying with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, children uh, who are studying together. So some can you give us some tips on how teachers can be of more help to them? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, the teachers, uh, the initially what teachers should do is first accept the fact that whatever they try, they are going to get a diverse classroom. So it is better to accept that, yes, there will be children with different speeds of learning, maybe different ways of understanding. They, so you will be having it in any classroom that you go to, any level, any classroom. So first, having an open mind, flexible mind about it, and then looking carefully that is there a child who is consistently not performing well in spite of giving the best? The teacher is trying. Obviously, when the teacher is not doing, we we rope in the parents or others to help also. In spite of that, the, if, a, if a child is not doing, then we have to think that maybe this child learns in a different way. OK, so maybe we can break down the lesson into small parts. I mean, uh, because it's a, it's quite a lot of thing. But I can just say that you can break the lesson down into very small parts and teach one part at a time. So that is one of the strategies that can be used. 
So hmm. that's that. Uh, that hmm. seems to work on the on the favor of the children when they will be self facing themselves. Yeah. So um, so is uh, so how many kinds of uh, disabilities are there? Uh, something that's very very common in our Indian society. Yeah, yeah. So we call them developmental disabilities. That means that they should be present in a child uh, uh, before the age of five years old. Okay, so they are called because as the child is developing, this uh, disability sorts of uh, restricts them in their learning. So uh, many are like I think all of us will be aware. One is visual impairment. Impairment. Visual impairment can be. Hundred percent, eighty percent, seventy percent. No, so, but then it does affect. So another is hearing impairment. Same way, hearing impairment also can be totally uh, no hearing or some hearing, hearing in some frequencies. Then we have locomotor, locomotor impairment where you have the difficulty in movement. So it can be not able to walk or uh, you know not able to move at all, not even. neck movement it can be that then we have intellectual impairment where we so we talk about children who are having uh, lower cognitive abilities you know so called low iq uh, earlier they used to be called uh, people with mental retardation so then we have autism and autism is a, a difficulty where the child faces a lot of difficulty in communication and social skills so uh, finds it very difficult to be part of a group so these are the basic ones that we find in our uh, society so um, they all are uh, they start before the age of 5 yeah thank you very much for sharing this with us it was really nice to have you with us and thank you for giving us an insight and uh, you also shared with us that uh, you know a teacher should be prepared to understand that there will be diversity yeah. and not only in uh, yes and not only in a school but even as people in the society we should yes. accept them as they are and mm -hmm. when we have expectations uh, like for ourselves uh, we should be very open to the fact that uh, we might not be uh, in the same phase and that's absolutely all right thank yeah. you so much mr lakshmi for being with us today it was great having you i'll definitely continue with our talk and yeah. thank you very much for now that. and thank you so much and have a yeah. lovely day ahead yeah thank you priyanka bye now let us understand that some of the students also have learning difficulties a guide to understand inclusive education better will tell us more about the learning difficulties Now there are various kinds of learning disabilities some of them are dyslexia autism and hyperactiveness now at our school we follow the inclusive method of teaching the inclusive method of teaching is when we have the learning disabled child also studying with the children who have normal functions with their learning intellect the main idea is to provide equal opportunities for students who have learning disabilities along with the students who do not have any difficulties in learning in this way we foster equality at our school the social victims show us a picture of our society which is so very painful now what about us how should we treat the disabled people the victims of the society there are only two words that i can tell you one is treat them with respect and the second is accept the fact that they are victims accept the fact that we live in a diverse society let me read you a small poem I have no legs but I still have feelings I cannot see but I think all the time although I am deaf I still want to communicate why do people see me as useless thoughtless talkless when I am capable as any for thoughts about our world so this poem is dedicated to all the differently abled people 
whom we share our society with. Lastly, let me read a quote. Respect and acceptance. We are all equal in the fact that we are all different. We are all different, which makes us all equal. We all have different skills and weaknesses that make us who we are. Our society is for everyone. So celebrating the day for differently abled people on the 3rd of December, I leave you with the thought, respect and acceptance. Thank you and have a wonderful day.